Right now at 6, everyone wants safe streets. People don't feel safe. They, and they don't feel safe because there's been a spike in crime. Some state lawmakers say better lighting would help, but the opposition says the community is being left in the dark. If you're going to go into a neighborhood and you want to create a safer street there or a safer environment, then you ought to include community. New body cam video shows the aftermath of a floor collapsing at an Aurora house party. Hey, you see anyone under here? No. Plus, calls keep coming in to contact Denver 7 about a busted apartment garage gate. Every time I walk into the garage, I pray that my car is there. Not being able to get answers from building management, we take a look at what rights residents have. And good evening and thank you for joining us at 6. I'm Ann Trujillo. I'm Shannon Ogden. Thanks for joining us. Now, both political parties can agree that reducing crime is a main priority of this legislative session. Some bills tackle big topics like addressing mental health and substance abuse. Others look at more simple approaches. Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez is live at 6. Megan, a bill for street improvements came up today. Safer streets can mean a lot of different things. It can mean getting rid of graffiti or better landscaping. You could see a broken window behind me here in Denver. But one idea is also to add more street lighting in order to maybe hopefully deter crime in some areas. We're here today to announce our plan to make Colorado safer. It was a press conference full of pomp, circumstance, and promises. And fund early intervention grants to prevent crime from happening in the first place. Three weeks to the day after the governor and Democratic lawmakers unveiled their plan to reduce crime in the state. We're doing this with communities and local mun municipalities working together. One of their top priorities faced its first committee test. Senate Bill 1, also known as the Safer Streets Bill, offers $10 million in grants to local governments to help with crime prevention through street design. Things like graffiti removal, sidewalk and sign improvements, and trash collection. Also, if you work uh, in an area where you have to go to rapid transit, we want to make sure that those routes that people get there to get there are safer. Another possible use of the money, streetlight improvements. We're giving grants to communities and they are the deciders of how they want these funds used to make them feel safer in their communities. Law enforcement from Pueblo, Boulder and Arapahoe County all testified in favor of the bill. These grants will allow cities like Pueblo to use environmental design to address crime. This bill just one piece of the governor's overall crime reduction strategy and not nearly the most controversial. Still, this looks like a bill that's trying to do something that's already being done. It received a lot of pushback from Republicans who questioned whether it was necessary. They already have all this in place. I'm having a hard time understanding why we think putting $10 million into something is actually going to prevent crime in the state. Others questioned the vague language and whether this is a return to broken window policing. There's a lot of of ways that this could go badly. There was also some surprising pushback. Denise Maez from Servicio Sigue stood behind the governor as he unveiled this bill package last month, but testified against the bill Thursday, saying it's good in theory, but... I think that's partly why you need neighborhood and community involved in the first instance, because they'll tell you where the crime is, how it's happening, why it's happening. And the bill doesn't require that. She also wants guarantees that the money won't be used for policing or code enforcement. Which I think will disproportionately impact communities of color. Nevertheless, it passed committee and moves on in the legislature. So after that bill passed committee hearing today, as people were kind of leaving that committee hearing, there was a heated exchange between a Republican center and a Democratic staffer. Some words were exchanged and it caused a stir in the hallway for at least a few minutes. Obviously, emotions were running high with this bill. Needless to say, both Republicans and Democrats want to take crime reduction in the city, in the state seriously, and both have their own ideas of how they really want to see that done. I'm live, Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And we know you'll keep watching on what's happening at the Capitol. Thank you, Megan. And there is a stark difference in opinion on whether better street lighting actually makes a difference on crime. A study by the University of Chicago found increased levels of light led to a 36% reduction of nighttime crime, such as murder, robbery, and aggravated assault. A different study by a group called darksky.org found street lights don't prevent accidents or crime, but do cost a lot of money to upgrade. And it is important to note that darksky.gov is dedicated to ending light pollution worldwide. Now, a separate Senate bill aimed at reducing crime was also debated at the Capitol today. Senate Bill 67 would create a grant program within the Peace Officers Standards and Training Board. The program would give grants to local law enforcement agencies to provide critical training to officers. Republican State Senator Paul Lundeen says this would help during high stress calls. 
thing. So when an incident that might spin out of control arises, we want to make sure that law enforcement has the training to deal with that effectively, to protect the individual who may or may not be a criminal. You don't, you want to give, you know, everybody has the right to be innocent until proven guilty and the law enforcement officers as well. An amendment to this bill passed today, but the bill was laid over for final action. Now, if it would pass, uh, it would be it would dedicate $50 million to this grant program over two years. Douglas County is down to two finalists for its open superintendent position. Today, the school board interviewed both candidates in a public meeting and the two finalists, Aaron Kane, who is the executive director of schools for American Academy and Danny Windsor, who is the executive director of schools for the Parker region and both addressed why they should be the next superintendent. One of my goals is to always respect views that differ from mine or from each other or whatever it might be to respect and listen and do everything I can to accommodate um, where people are at. Douglas County School District needs to be a community school district and you have to systemically approach to do that. And that means I need to be able to hear the hard things about that are not going well in this district and I also need to hear the things that are going well and building upon those things. And both agreed on strengthening teachers through compensation and making sure they know they're valued. There will be another public comment period on March 22nd and after that the board will vote on who they want to be superintendent. New body cam video tonight shows the chaotic mess after a floor collapse during a house party this weekend in Aurora. Arapahoe County deputies released this video. In it, you can see the entirety of the floor opened up to the basement. Videos on social media show a large crowd on the floor right before it collapsed. The deputies searched the basement looking for anybody who might be trapped. Do you see anyone under there? I don't know, sir. I'm trying to just right. Hey, you see anyone under here? No. All right. Hey, can you go upstairs? Hey, can you go upstairs? There. And yesterday, Arapahoe County deputies announced no charges will be filed in this. Just a heartbreaking story tonight out of western Colorado. An 11 year old girl tragically killed. She was run over by her school bus. This happened in Parachute, just outside Grand Junction. Police say she tripped while running to catch her bus and was caught beneath the wheels. DIA owes Adams County and several cities within that county $33.5 million for plane noise violations. The Colorado Court of Appeals made that ruling today, and the court says DIA did not properly monitor noise during a three-year period starting in 2014, and that violates an agreement with the county that goes back 30 years when the airport was being built. Broken gates, car thefts, increased crime. Residents of a downtown Denver apartment complex have continuously reached out to contact Denver 7 about these ongoing problems. Now, since our story ran last week, Denver 7's Bayon Wang has learned the problem isn't just contained to one complex. Yeah, the gates being broken is definitely a problem for sure. At the Lugano at Cherry Creek Apartments in Denver, some residents say the problem is constant. They break down quite often. In some cases, residents say gates remain open for weeks at a time and that car thefts and break-ins are part of the normal there. They came in and uh, basically looked through my car, um, left everything open. They took like a pair of sunglasses. Everything in my glove box was stolen. My music CDs were stolen. Similar experiences were shared by residents at other apartment complexes. Complexes. The 2020 Lawrence apartment garage gate has had a giant gash in it for months, only attached by zip ties. The garage gate at CityGate Apartments in Denver has also been broken and wide open for months. Our cars are all getting broken into all the time. The gate at the Mark at Ridgegate Apartments in Lone Tree has been wide open for more than a month. All of these complexes say supply chain issues have delayed the process to fix the gates. Question is, how long does that excuse hold water? So we asked an attorney. If it goes to really a safety issue or a danger issue, a tenant could definitely make an argument that due to the, this broken gate, there's a significant amount of crime. I could be subject to it. They can make an argument in this area of law. But it can get tricky, according to Deborah Wilson, an attorney who represents landlords. She says most properties are not liable, saying in part, typically there's something in a lease that says we are not responsible for your contents. When apartments could be liable would be if they promised it was a secure building or we promise the gates are always working, which landlords don't do. But the landlord has a reasonable amount of time to try to fix the underlying issue. Landlords are typically allowed a reasonable amount of time to make repairs. The landlord certainly has an argument of saying we're doing the best I can 
the question arises, is the best you can good enough? And is it really the best you can do? In some cases, tenants can end their lease without penalty in these situations. Both attorneys agree, read every word in your lease agreement to avoid these kind of surprises. Bayon Wang, Denver 7. And we only learn of these stories because of tips sent in by you. So you can contact Denver 7 by calling the number on your screen or email contact7 at the denverchannel.com. A Weld County steer is living up to its name and its 13 year old owner is on a mission to bring him back home. 13 year old Alexander says he was taking his 4-H steer named Houdini for its usual evening walk when it overpowered him and got away. Well, this happened on Tuesday afternoon in Horse Creek Reservoir southwest of Hudson. So take a listen to Alexander on how Houdini got his name. He did this once before, uh, but that time we weren't really we weren't able to walk him yet because we had just gotten him. It was probably a week in. He just didn't want to. He jumped a six foot fence and was gone. Alexander says Houdini is still missing, so if you happen to see him around Weld County, please reach out to Denver 7. We will gladly put you in touch with Alexander. After some beautiful sunny days with highs in the 70s, this is what our radar is going to look like this weekend. I'm tracking this next storm headed our way. I'll have all the details coming up. A Colorado veteran's dreams are becoming reality. One day someone said I should open a brewery and I kind of laughed about it a little bit and uh, decided to open up. But his story isn't shared by all. Coming up, the barrier he says is preventing service members from realizing their potential. Plus, skiing in Colorado could now cost you a month's rent. 